uh, today on this front day, uh, uh, which is basically blue food, which is copper chimney, spaghetti kitchen, uh, gelato Italian, you know, so you know. So that aside, I'll also do this, you know, touch upon a little bit on what does private equity look for, you know, because it's, uh, it's a little bit of a black box for most people. You know, what is it that private equity investors look for? So the, I would say that, you know, the top five things that private equity investors would look for, number one, is what is their exit? So if, if you are inviting private equity into your company, uh, the first thing you need to be clear about is how are, you, how are you going to give them an exit? Every investor who invests, the first thing he asks is, how am I going to get out of this company? So you need to be clear, if you are inviting private equity, that either it's going to be a, if you get to the scale where, where you can actually IPO, and now the bar is becoming higher and higher and higher. To IPO, you know, today, I mean, unless you're a 2,000 crore market cap company, you know, it is actually counterproductive to IPO because you get stuck with all kinds of problems. If you're a small company, you, you know, you have all kinds of problems if you, if you actually IPO and create more problems than you solve. So taking capital from the Indian public is becoming harder and harder and more and more challenging. So, so one needs to be clear on what is the exit for the investor. So that's the first and foremost. The next thing that people look at is the management and the management team and the entrepreneur. So that is very, very critical. You know, that has many, many elements. So the top three I would say is that you know the, the understanding that equity is actually more expensive than debt. You know, that is somehow somehow with the Indian Indian um, entrepreneur mindset. You know, equity is seen, seen as zero cost and not really, you know, debt is seen as more expensive than equity, which is not actually the case. You know, the amount of headaches uh, you have. Uh, uh, so, so that the understanding that equity is more expensive than debt, the ability to to be open-minded about hiring the right spot people in the, where, where there are gaps in your company, because, you know, obviously every entrepreneur has a certain span of control. And beyond that span of control, it is very hard for people to, to manage and to grow. And most companies sort of stop growing because people want control down to the micro level at every level, which does not, which is not possible. So what people, what private equity look at is the ability, is try to judge the entrepreneur's open-mindedness in terms of being able to manage that growth. The third thing is that, you know, the most important thing actually that entrepreneurs, that private equity people back are entrepreneurs. They don't necessarily back business plans. People actually back the entrepreneurs. You know, so their vision, their hunger, their ability to grow. Because see, in, in India, it's not like many Western countries where, you know, private equity traditionally is actually you take over a company, you squeeze the cost. You know, the traditional private equity that many large like the good, like the mains, the, the TPC, the Blackstone, what they traditionally do, they take a company which has which developed a lot of fat, they burn all the fat, they squeeze it down, load a lot of debt, and squeeze the operations, manage it very well, and then turn it around and, and you know, make it much leaner, more profitable, and re That is not the, not the model in India. The model in India is growth industry. So, unless the entrepreneur has a lot of uh, passion and energy and enthusiasm. So that's the that's because the opportunity is there. It's a very simple business plan in India. India needs more of everything. Like we were pointed out, three and a half times consumption. In ten years, the next ten years the market is going to be four times what it is today. In everything. So it's very easy. You can have a business plan, a single slide saying that you know this is my service, this is going to be four to four times. We don't understand. It's all about the execution. So that's number three. Now and of course the last but not the least the fourth thing that that uh, private equity guys jump that part, I feel just about it a little bit. This is the right valuation. Because uh, you you can get around many things, but you but it is impossible to get around the the fact that you overpaid. So so these are some of the things that private equity actually you know, from a perspective of what do private equity investors look at. You know, the, so so the, the point is Coming specifically to our to Everstone, we look at two specific uh, sectors more. I mean, we are very excited about the agri uh, opportunity, both in terms of agri infrastructure and 
agree services and uh, and the ability to uh, become from your commodity to a little more value added. So the value added part in the agriculture and the, the full infrastructure around it, like logistics, like cold chains, like you know silos and things. And uh, okay, sorry. So the kind of investments that we do are basically investments into companies which are uh, which are which require growth capital, which are which can absorb something like you know 100 to 200 to a 500 crores kind of capital over a period of time. So obviously they need a certain minimum size and, and scale. The other thing that we, uh, uh, that we, that we look at is obviously uh, the, our, in, the sectors that we are more focused on are infrastructure, enablers, not necessarily the, the infrastructure, direct infrastructure, but more infrastructure enablers. The picks and shovels guys, if you know what I mean. And uh, consumer products and services. So that is really where you know the whole demographics piece that Kumbo was pointing out. You know, it's, it's pointing to one thing that India is, is largely a consumer-driven uh, society. I mean, 65 over 60 percent of our growth comes from consumption. Unlike China, where only a third of, our, of the growth actually comes from consumption. So we really focused on 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 consumption, on brands, on uh, services, on infrastructure. So those are the things that we're we are more focused on. Yeah? Thanks. Uh, I'll, um, in the interest of time, you know, I, I would like to move on to uh, Puneet. Puneet is um, son of the soil there, and, and uh, if you can give uh, perspective on, as a, you've, been, you've been an entrepreneur, Thai also, you meet with an entrepreneur. So, so what, is, what is it that uh, entrepreneurs here are looking for? From, from the private equity players, and and what do you see as is um, uh, you know some some of the questions you had about you know, uh, uh, that you wanted to ask? Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, I think when you look at the whole issue of entrepreneurship and uh, equity uh, uh, financing, it's like uh, onion, and there are many levels to it. If, if, if you know you feel it at multiple levels. If you look at this region particularly, it's a split between, uh, I would say, three kinds of entrepreneurs. One is the guy at the very early stage who's struggling to uh, get his business off the ground, or has a first customer, or has a second customer, doing about 50 lakhs to the road and wants to build it up. Uh, and his, his struggles, or uh, her struggles, are around uh, adding capital and this vicious cycle. Over the last, sorry, over the last uh, four or five years that I've been around here now in Chandigarh, the number of such people has grown exponentially. And I think if you guys would come back again a couple of years down the line, uh, you would have seen again those numbers far greater than they would have expanded in a proportion. I think the second thing you see uh, among the entrepreneurs here is uh, uh, what I would say you build a business. Uh, you reach the threshold of uh, 25, 50, 75 crores. And then you need, uh, you know, that's a point where you reach what I call the Punjabi quotient uh, of satisfaction. So, so, so that means that, uh, you, you know, I uh, buy my milk, I buy my milk, I uh, get my beamer, I move into a big house, and uh, I no longer want to go to office at 8 a.m. or 7 a.m. and what it takes to uh, build the business. And uh, so I want to slow down. And all I want to cycle off some of the profits and uh, start yet another business till I reach the next level of uh, the Punjabi course. Right. So that's the second. Uh, the next level then is the 150, 200 crores, and then the 400 crores, and then about uh, the 700 to 1,000 crores. And if you were to actually look at the number of businesses uh, that exist in this region uh, that are uh, 1,000 crores and above the revenue, uh, you would uh, see that the pyramid drops fairly dramatically. Uh, and it has got nothing to do with the 
enthusiasm of the entrepreneurs who wanted to grow the business as much as reaching the level of satiation. Uh, either because the guy is satisfied, he is unwilling to put a team together that takes him to grow up. Third, which we are discovering, and I think it came, uh, it came over, I just talked to them uh, on the side. Uh, two years ago, we did a big show uh, where a couple of folks died in Dubai and a couple of folks died in Chandigarh. Uh, it took me and your ICIC adventures. We went up the GT road. Uh, and we were in Jalanda, uh, you know, two or seven days of us. So then the guy who comes up to us, and we actually had a revenue base of uh, 1,200 crores. It was a lot of confidence. Uh, you know, we have got the largest lot of confidence supply out of India. So this is an old Sikh gentleman who comes up to us and he says, uh, Okay, and, and we are seeing the reawakening of some set of people who uh, a lot of us who are younger are saying uh, a set of people who uh, the uh, the and the vision and I think we are seeing the possibilities now thanks to a uh, whole set of uh, economic issues that Rupa pointed out and that uh, and uh, Dean talked about. The, if you Take another again peel out, you're also seeing uh, the number of uh, venture ready entrepreneurs in the early stage, VC uh, capital or uh, entrepreneurs, or even the private equity entrepreneurs who are venture ready in terms of they may have the vision, they may have the cost losses, they may have the skills uh, to build a business and take it as a work. But they are not uh, what a lot of people in the industry would classify as venture ready in terms of. A, their ability to arrive at uh, a fair valuation for everyone, uh, or uh, also in terms of ability to give stake to key employees and uh, give stake to partners and uh, uh, also to the team together, uh, which may be world class. I, I think if you compare North, uh, and North here is even Delhi, I have put Delhi in that bracket, and North of Delhi. The number of venture ready entrepreneurs at whatever stage of capital drops dramatically to the south. Uh, and uh, so those are the combination of things uh, uh, that are there. The downturn has been good in a number of ways. Uh, it has forced a lot of people to uh, reevaluate uh, and, and uh, uh, look at equity financing uh, very seriously. I think folks in this region always, if you take another and feel out, are always surprised that uh, the cost of equity finance uh, has been mentioned. I've talked to a number of people uh, and, and they come down and uh, see the uh, from the side. When they get a term sheet out from either a PC or a private equity player, one of the elements of a term sheet is buy back after a few years down the line uh, with the 20 or a year or 20 percent uh, rate of increase. And that's the first shocker uh, in terms of uh, I did not bargain for this. And that's also a reflection on, uh, because uh, as we mentioned, you think you just assume that that is going to be cheap. I think, I think our, our reaction to that is really that we are not lenders of capital. We invest capital <coughs> and we expect our partners to treat the capital like their own capital. I think when we see that respect for capital, we see a very different treatment of the both partners, treatment of the capital, and treatment of us. So. I, I agree. And, and, and having uh, lived in the valley before moving back here, uh, you know, there was a thumb rule at least in the valley that said that uh, just because you were over capitalized doesn't make you very successful. But rather, if you're a little hungry, uh, uh, you know, uh, you probably built a better business. Uh, and the second is that if you use the capital to build a great uh, corporate office, uh, the thumb will really short that stock. Especially, you know, because they ain't going to go anywhere. Uh, the, the money has gone into uh, 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 assets. So, so, uh, so I think uh, the region here, there's a lot of potential. I think uh, sessions like these become useful. Uh, uh, not at different stages, uh, it's a journey. Uh, it's a journey that two people uh, cover uh, over a span of time. Uh, the mindsets are changing, they're changing quicker. Uh, the numbers certainly are there. Uh, I think you will see uh, over the next 
ideals, a lot of uh, ambitious rules emerge up here. And the two sectors certainly that, that are going to drive it, one is pharma, the other is agri, uh, that are going to drive it. Uh, and you're going to see a lot of success going to those two sectors. Are we seeing a trend for, you know, the sons of the first generation entrepreneurs now coming to business, having a slightly fresher outlook to life and to business and to growth, etc.? Yes. Uh, and you see two sets of people. I think you're seeing the, the second generation uh, want to, uh, uh, they're becoming more ambitious. Uh, they, they want to reach out and they want to grow quicker. Uh, and, and you're also seeing a very qualified people move back uh, from the US or UK. Uh, and they want to move back to their hometowns, which are not necessarily the mega cities that we talk about. Uh, and when you move back uh, at senior levels to these towns, you may not have the opportunity of senior management position. So the only opportunity left is to be there. What surprised me was that I once ran into, uh, I mean, in Chandigarh, I can say, I, in my mind, I'm seeing the emergence of the first turnaround team being born here, which is a set of two, three people uh, who are uh, looking to turn around a business which is based on some. And that trend will change. As so, and, you know, uh, people talk about you know, cost of equity capital. Uh, you know, one, one thing I would like to add that from what I've seen, having been on the private equity side and now on KPMG, we've seen a number of private equity places. So, yeah, but one can negotiate, you know, like you said, the minimum 20% return. It depends on, you know, uh, how well the business is and how one negotiates that. But, uh, Really, if the value addition is really happening, like like you know the bulk of or some of those, then you know that that should be really factored in because you know as you are going to business, capital is coming just like a money is there. Then getting it from a bank or getting a private equity, you know, is is the one consideration. But if the bank would not generally, you know, have the Value addition that a, a private equity house like uh, this uh, can provide, you know. That part, I don't know. What do you think about that? No, absolutely. I think there are different forms of capital, and uh, uh, I think we kind of came a very good outline in terms of what private equity investors expect. And uh, all I would add to that is, you know, uh, uh, capital generally follows good opportunities uh, and, and you would never see dearth of capital if you are in the right business with the right opportunity. So I, I would say, you know, it's the confidence that you all have in your businesses, it's your own abilities or your confidence in your own abilities which kind of drive a lot of the kind of, I would say, the rub off effect on investors and which you know, brings investors to a point of view in terms of how they see the future through your eyes rather than through their own eyes. Uh, uh, but you know, it's it's uh, uh, we are we are not in the we are not in the crystal ball game. We don't like to you know necessarily like to predict the future. But we know that we like to uh, create businesses which can, regardless of how the future is, is is kind of future proof. As long as we are building those kind of businesses, something which we are very excited to be part of. And I think, if, if I may add, uh, uh, what I think what both venture capital and the private equity are doing in a very sublimal way, not an intended outcome, is also what entrepreneurs in India are not used to, which is an engaged board. Yeah. Uh, so far, boards, entrepreneurs have treated boards with this day and uh, uh, I mean, they've tolerated boards uh, and engaged boards. Uh, is, is is relatively new phenomena. I guess remember a friend uh, talking about uh, a company where they put in some money as an angel investor, serious money, uh, and the next thing they realize that, that the entrepreneurs have used that money somewhere else. <laughs> you know, not 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 in terms of building an asset for themselves as much as uh, they needed the money and they built another business. Uh, but he was not in on that business. Uh, and uh, but that's the downside of. Uh, so you have a, 
interestingly, just as an aside, we have an interesting saying in our industry that before the investment is done, the promoter has a vision and we have the money. After the investment is done, we have the vision and promoter has money. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, we hope not to create such a situation that we share both the vision and the capital. And with the network, can you, you, know, you mentioned 18 investments, right? Uh, yeah, 17. Yeah. 17. So, uh, some of the names, names if you can give, you know, uh, so the people can get a perspective. Yeah, so, uh, let me, so consumer businesses, we invest in BLCC, as you know, slimming and wellness uh, uh, chain. Uh, Sula Wines, which I'm sure all of you also hopefully tasted. If not, you must taste. <laughs> it helps us. <laughs> It's on the menu of my yes, great. <laughs> uh, Top Securities, which is one of the largest guarding and security agencies in the country. In fact, it's the largest Indian and the largest Indian multinationals present over here. Uh, Interop, which is one of India's largest uh, pre engineered uh, building construction uh, companies. B. Bilmoria, which is one of the leading civil contractors. They, in fact, most recently did Mr. Mukesh Ambani's. Building our home. Um, Asian Genco, which is building large hydro.